of us come from tribal people. All of us in this room. And yet, something happened. Your great-great-grandmother was right. She was close to the earth. I don't care where you came from. You might have one or two more greats or a couple less greats, but just for rounding purposes, we'll say. (laughs) Your great-great-grandmother was right. She was close to the earth. She was close to the land. And somebody somewhere got a different idea, a renegade minority in Europe, because Europe was all right. But it was a renegade minority in Europe that said, we've got a better idea. We, we, we don't see this as a planet. We see it now as a plantation. And we're going to go around the world and start telling people that they're mistaken. That's not a tree. That's lumber. That's not an animal. That's a pelt. And your great-grandmother said, no, no, this is wrong. This is precious. This is sacred. That river is sacred. That tree is sacred. Don't mess this up. Don't destroy this. And the colonizer said, no, no, no. You're uncivilized. You're, you're a savage. If you're in Europe, you're a, you're a witch. You're a pagan. If you're anyplace else, you're, you're uncivilized. We got to educate you. No, you can't put a price tag on this. That's what your great-grandmother said. And the colonizer said, no, we can put a price tag on everything, including you. That happened. That happened. And now, just a few hundred years later, (laughs) they ain't looking kind of bad. They ain't looking kind of treacherous. Weather getting kind of wacky. Water tasting kind of funny. Scariest channel on TV, the Weather Channel. You can't even let your children watch the Weather Channel. No, no, watch Freddy Krueger. That's too scary. Something wrong. Something wrong. Great-grandmama was right. And so now, inside the West, inside America, something is starting to stir. Some wisdom is starting to emerge. This country that has every color and every class, all the peoples of the world have come around this campfire, and a new conversation is starting. A new conversation is starting about, is there some way that we can find our way back home now? Is there some way we can find our way back to grandmama's wisdom? Now, Vanity Fair calls that the green economy. And we'll take that one. That's all right. Green is a good color. Because it's got all different kind of shades and colors of green, as you just saw. We'll take that color. But it's deeper than Vanity Fair. It's deeper than a solar panel. This is the human family coming back to itself. That's what's happening in this conference. That's why you're so happy and excited. That's why you're singing songs about installation. Right? Because you can feel something beginning to knit itself back together that's been torn apart for too long. That's what's happening in this conference. That's what's happening in these organizations. That's what's happening in this movement. The human family gets to make a decision. Am I right? Who are we? In the final hour, who are we? Are we locusts? Was America a mistake? Was Western civilization a mistake? Was the human species a mistake? Are we locusts? Are we going to drive mass extinction until we extinguish ourselves? Are we locusts? Or are we honeybees? What kind of species are we? We know we're going to work. We're going to be busy. Can't sit still no way. But what kind of work? And what kind of relationship between that work and our sister and brother species? So this is a profound movement. 
And you can walk in the dignity of that. This is a redemptive movement. This is a noble movement. This is a movement that our great-great-grandmothers are encouraging with whispers in our ear. Be brave. Be brave. Don't get up there and give your same old speech again. <laughs> They've heard it before, brother. <laughs> Too many times. Be brave. We just stop at a clean energy revolution. We won't have done it. Am I right? Am I right, brother? Still working. If we just stop at a clean energy revolution, but we don't deal with how we're dealing with, with water and food and waste and toxics and how we treat each other. All we are going to have is solar-powered bulldozers, solar-powered buzz saws, and biofuel bombers to fight wars for lithium for batteries rather than oil, and we'll still have a dead planet in a hundred years. So this movement is a profound movement. This movement represents the best hopes of a people, a nation, a species to Take the best of the West. You know, I, I like my iPod. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I do. I like my iPod. I'm not that mad at the West every day. <laughs> Beyonce knows. I mean, come on now. So, but is there something that we can redeem and save from this and marry it to the best of the indigenous wisdom and create a new world? Well, now, if that's our movement, then we get to do something world historic. And we have to make sure that we don't compromise in the short term for quick expedience, the power of long-term transformation. See, if we decide that that's what we want to do, we need everybody. If we just want to pass a bill, we only need just a few people and some lobbyists you know, and some ads in New York Times, you know, and, you know. <laughs> Add that to my report. <laughs> Here you go, Mr. Foundation Man, another victory for us. <laughs> Make your check payable too, right? right? If that's the kind of movement that it is, we'll have a lot of grants and awards on a dead planet. So we got to be bigger than that. Let me say this, let's be braver. Let's build a green growth alliance where, when I say growth, I don't mean growing the amount of crap that we consume. I mean growing our quality of life, growing our human capacity. A green growth alliance that includes everybody so we can turn this thing around. If we do that, we can build a green economy that Dr. King would be proud of.